Hey guys, Edbud here and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got an update video for you on happenings with the baby and also a bit of a training update from the past couple of weeks really, a bit of an overview on how I feel my fitness and overall performance level has increased a little bit, maybe just a little bit, which is good. So this week along with the previous week really have been a very tense affair. Waiting for our new arrival to appear or not, as it turns out. Finally though, Friday evening, got a call from Miss Zed Bird who'd popped down for a checkup really just to see how things were going to tell me I needed to get the bags and all the gear and equipment to the hospital pronto. For about two seconds I did think whether I could run and make it there but um, I thought that was a really bad idea. So we finally got to meet our little lad, Fergus Bo Budzinski. It's a good name. You know I love Bo Diddley. It's not going to be the Bo Diddley spelling of Bo, but hey, that's cool. It was certainly a whistle-stop experience, guys, I have to say. In the space of three hours, really, uh, we got to meet him. I want to say a big thanks to all the NHS staff. They are absolutely incredible. I think sometimes in the UK, some people might take it for granted that we have that incredible service. The people we have working there are just second to none. Warm care and attention shown to Miss Sedbird, myself and Fergus have just amazing. You guys are incredible. I want to say also thanks to the legend who is my dad, who actually was looking after my older daughter while all this was going on, but also dealing with the fact my mum was very unwell and he had to get the paramedics in and all sorts, but what an incredible guy. Love you, Dad. So more on both mum and baby soon. They are staying in the hospital for a little while just to make sure uh, he's okay in the special baby unit they have there. He's a bit of a grumpy fella at the moment, probably due to everything that occurred. So they're both there just resting and recuperating at hospital, which is the best place for them to be. Well, Daisy and I deal with Oliver the dog, Beast and Mildred, which is a job in itself. So I'm quite amazed. I've really managed to keep some reasonable training going the last couple of weeks. Hitting 40 miles both weeks. It's been certainly scaled back, but it's enabled me to do some more speed work, which is something I hadn't really been able to do while I was hitting those 60 mile weeks. Certainly been keeping things close to home during the last two weeks. No 15 mile long runs or anything like that. I think I would have been in the bad books if I'd hit one of those. So my main aim was to keep some core miles going around about eight minutes per mile average, so about five minutes per kilometre. Keep those topped up so I'm at least hitting the 40 miles, but then injecting some speed work, which is really quite fun. Burns off some of that tension, that built up sort of anxiety. It was just gone. It did mean heading out at some slightly strange hours of the day, some night runs, a very early morning runs, and even during the day, which was a bit strange. I never really knew when I was going to get out there, but kind of made it quite fun and exciting, and then explored a few different routes as well. Found a really nice route very nearby where there's a really awesome one mile lap that I can continuously do. I think I was out quite late one evening and I just kept running round and round it to try and burn off some of that tension. So despite the decreased number of miles, I'm actually really heartened by the level of performance that I've shown. Certainly that top line speed is improving. Let's dig into the stats a little more. So this morning I was really sort of buzzing, really feeling really good, thinking everyone can just rest and relax now. I can get out for some fast miles. So I grabbed the endorphin speeds and hit the accelerator to really burn some dust. Certainly drier conditions this morning, so wasn't too worried. I think that's one issue that some people do have with the endorphin range is traction in wet weather. So five miles at an average pace of six minutes, 54 per mile. That's about four minutes, 17 per kilometer. If you like that sort of thing, and I like that sort of thing. So I think the slightly less rigid nature of the endorphin speed is perhaps a little more conducive to those drier conditions meant it was really the ideal time to test these out with a faster pace. Heart rate nice and low. I did have a very brief stop at one point to tell a friend about our new arrival. They were really pleased. But then smashed it out again for the remaining four miles, actually using a two-step 
breathing method, two steps in, two steps out, that kind of thing. So I wasn't really pushing myself beyond my capabilities in any way. Just felt really easy today, really relaxed. So really encouraging stuff from the bud man. Another day during the two weeks was in the Endorphin Pro. Seven miles, average pace of seven minutes, six seconds per mile. That's about 11.3 kilometers at four minutes, 25 per kilometer. Again, I would suggest that the outsole of this shoe is probably the one slight letdown. People are not enjoying it in wet weather. It's probably the one reservation that just keeps popping up here and there. It is a little slippery. I've got no degradation of the outsole on here at the moment. And I do run on some quite varied terrain in my normal natural running habitat. You know, sometimes there's some impromptu grass verge excursions, some liberally applied mud patches, and a few nice muddy puddles as well that you can run through. If that's your thing, that's my thing. You'd never know it from the state of these though, they look relatively untouched. I suggest they're not really that far off grip wise to the Vaporfly Next Percent or the Alpha Fly Next Percent. I think though the king of outsole rubber is still Adidas. That continental stuff, it just can't be beaten. Some of the slower miles I've been running actually, those core miles have been in the Run Fast 2. I'm calling it the Run Slow 2. It feels really nice to me at slower paces. It's just really forgiving underfoot. And the lacing's really great. You get a really good lockdown without even trying. Nice and light too. There's a few days where I felt sort of laden down with worry and anxiety about stuff. Like I had lead weights in my knees. But I put these on, I was still able to move at a relatively nimble speed. <laughs> the previous week, I thought I'd head out for a little 5K action in the SL20. Up the cadence, about 174 steps per minute. Heart rate still nice and low, 146 beats per minute. And a 20 mile an hour wind to help me out in one direction at least. 21.01 on the clock for that one. And a six minutes, 45 seconds per mile average pace. Just using the first mile as a warm up, really. Always find that it's a good motivator if you're expecting a baby to forget to take your phone with you. Then you realize that you've got to get back as quickly as possible and that does really help to push the pace. So two sub six minute, 40 miles in there. I was really happy with that. Especially when I just sort of went out for a run. I think it works out about four minutes, 12 seconds per kilometer average. So happy with that. I think if I can reach some reasonable speeds like that, when I've got some other people around me, some competition, there's a race environment and I've actually eaten something, I think I'm doing okay. So promising signs of that 100 day run streak has had a really good effect on my core strength and endurance. And it certainly lifted up that top line sustainable speed. I'll be back with some more updates very soon. TV recommendation today. You guys know I love my old BBC comedies. It's kind of like a sort of comedy sitcom, this one, The Good Life. One of the characters actually in The Good Life often reminds me a little bit of Mrs. Edbud. I wonder if you can guess which one it is. No, it's not Tom Good or played by Richard Briers. Basically a show where there's a couple who've had enough of the rat race and they decide to become sort of self-sustainable. So they grow lots of crops and they've got some animals and things like that. And they have a really cool garden. They're always sort of mending stuff. It's just a really wonderful show. I love the whole vibe of it, the whole the whole sustainability and economic sort of style. They just don't make stuff like this anymore. Absolutely fantastic. If you've never heard of it, do go and check it out. The Good Life. Okay, that's about all for today, guys. I'm gonna collapse in a heap on the floor. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. I much appreciate it. It would really appreciate it too if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch the new videos out into the world. Helps the channel out a huge amount as well if you would give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.